Welcome back. Today we're talking about the most expensive game of King of the Hill in the entirety of human history. What I'm talking about is the semiconductor war between the US and China. Specifically, I want to look at a company that before last week you may have never heard of, Moore's Threads. Now you may be wondering why a GPU company would call herself Moore's Threads. Sounds maybe more like a line of high-end bed sheets or something. But the name comes from a computing idea called Moore's Law. And this company, well, it may actually be one of the most critical pieces of China's plan to delete NVIDIA from their entire economy. But before we get into all of that, I wanna welcome you to Ruben Tech, the only place on the internet that meets at the intersection of tech, politics, and finance. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Now let's go ahead and get started. Today we're gonna to look at a few things. First, I wanna look at why Morse Thread isn't Huawei. Then we're gonna look at why China imports more chips than oil and why $100 billion of government money in Beijing's big fund still can't buy a machine that prints three nanometer chips. Well, let's get into it. If you follow my channel, then you know Huawei and you know all about their AI line of accelerators, the Ascend series. And you also know that these chips are actually very good and that they perform even better when in tandem, i.e. in systems, with the Huawei CM384 being comparable to Nvidia's NVL72. So you may be asking yourself, why does China need this other company, Moore's Thread? And the answer simply is because Huawei is building a tank. The Huawei Ascend chip is a beast at calculating the math needed for AI. It's specialized, it's heavy, and in a sanctioned environment, it works perfectly. It is Beijing's armor versus Western sanctions. But you can't drive a tank to the grocery store. You can't use a tank to run AutoCAD or render a Pixar movie or play Black Myth Wukong. And this, simply put, is where more thread comes in. They're trying to build a general purpose GPU that replaces the NVIDIA card sitting in the government office, the university's workstations, or even gaming PCs. They aren't going after just AI per se, but really, everything else. If they get to excel in AI like Nvidia, I'm sure that would be icing on their cake, but again, different markets. And so now you may be asking, what is the problem in all of this? Well, let me tell you. You see, while Huawei has their tank working and is deployed in the cloud and in the hands of AI start startups doing real and capable work, Morris Thread is still very much behind. On this channel, we have discussed how many companies are trying to dethrone Nvidia by attacking this moat, i.e. CUDA. And Moore's Thread is no different. This company was started by two former NVIDIA employees, so they are very familiar with CUDA. And their plan is multi-prong. One, by trying to copy NVIDIA's software ecosystem by building their own, i.e. they want function calls to be near identical to what you would run from CUDA. Two, they are providing a source-to-source -source translator on many things, and in three, they're even attempting to go further by experimenting with accept, intercepting API calls to allow you to directly use CUDA tools, i.e. like Microsoft. But it's still very early. They admit it is not complete and likely won't be anytime soon. And so people are always asking me, why is CUDA so hard to replicate? And I guess my response is this. Go ahead and take your favorite novel, whatever it may be, and try to translate it into a language that you know nothing about. Now, maybe you use Google Translate or you buy a book online, but the simple fact is, is that when you're done, I'm guaranteeing you it will be messy, it's gonna be buggy, and at times, this is gonna be broken. And in order to clean it up it takes time. Unfortunately, it takes lots of it. But now let's pivot to the financial aspect because this is where some of these numbers will actually break people's minds. You see, China imports roughly 400 billion USD worth of chips every single year. That is more than they spend on oil. Just stop and think about that for a second. And now I know what you're thinking if you're in America. You're gonna look at your iPhone, your router, your smart toaster, and it's all gonna say made in China. So you're gonna say, why are they importing these chips if they're all made in China? Well, you see the detail is in the nuance of what exactly made in China means. China is the world's assembler. It is the world's manufacturer. However, it is not the world's foundry yet. Let's go ahead and think of the chip supply chain like a sandwich. The top bun is the design. That's mostly the US with companies like Nvidia, Apple, Qualcomm, et cetera. The meat in the middle is the fabrication. We can point out TSMC in Taiwan or Samsung in Korea. And the bottom bun is packaging and assembling. That is China. 
So when you buy a smart plug that says made in China, the chip inside might have been designed in California, printed in Taiwan, and assembled in China. You see, China puts the sandwich together. If you cut off the meat or the top bun, China is just left holding an empty plate or half-made sandwich. And all of this brings us to the manufacturing bottleneck. You see, the U.S. has imposed severe sanctions on Chinese enterprise in the high technology sector. They will give reasons like national security or protecting IP, but the real matter of the fact is this, the West is scared to compete. Because on a level playing field, China has shown time and time again that when they step into an area, that margins are slaughtered, i.e. efficiency is the name of the game and that affects U.S. and Western companies' big and healthy bottom lines. Thus, sanctions. So China has had to respond, and that's where you'll hear names like SMIC. That's China's answer to TSMC. They are a foundry, which is just a fancy word for a factory that prints chips for other people. These foundries, along with powerhouses like Huawei, are working to assert Chinese sovereignty, to assert that no other country gets to dictate their future. And they are doing a great job, but they still have a very long road in front of them. Now you may remember on this channel we discussed the rumor that SMIC and Huawei were looking to test a domestic EUV machine by the end of 2025. And when I covered this, I said it's absolutely amazing that they're doing such, but that I'm skeptical that this is gonna help in the short term, i.e. it's still gonna be a long time. Now in the comments, a lot of people got on me about that. They felt that was being very unfair. But let me just be crystal clear here. EUV, extreme ultraviolet lithography, is probably the most complex machine humans have ever built, period. It involves blasting molten tin with lasers to create plasmas hotter than the surface of the sun, all done at precision that you cannot even begin to imagine. And there's only one company, ASML in the Netherlands, that makes them, okay? So in the entire history of human civilization, only one firm makes them. ASML. And unfortunately, due to US restrictions, i.e. sanctions, they are unable to sell them to China. So China is currently making their chips using older technology, DUV. Now they have innovated and come up with techniques called multi-pattering, which is essentially exposing the film four times to get better results. However, as we've discussed, this is expensive, it's, it's slow, and the yields are not so great. And so this brings me back to my assessment I made earlier this year. Can they build this prototype in a lab? Will they test it before the end of 2025? Yeah, it's very possible. But does that automatically mean that they're gonna be building a factory line that runs 24 seven without breaking sometime soon? Probably not. You see, there really are no shortcuts to building a three nanometer chip. It simply put, is just going to take a lot of time. So where does all this leave us? Well, China has the big fun. They're throwing $100 billion at this problem. They're trying to replicate 30 years of global specialization inside their own borders. And let me tell you, if they can do this, it is literally unprecedented in, unprecedented in human history. Now, Huawei has successfully built a bunker for AI, but the rest of the ecosystem is still lacking. The graphics cards for more threads, the lithography machines, and the software, well, is still years behind. You see, money buys equipment, but it doesn't buy time. And right now, in the race for silicon supremacy, China is being forced through sanctions to run a marathon while wearing work boots. So I hope this clears up a few things on Morris Thread. I know it's very exciting, right? They're an exciting new company, but they have an uphill battle in front of them. This isn't unusual for the Chinese. They have shown their resilience and ability to overcome, but these things, simply put, they will take time. So please understand, I am not doubting anyone's ability to do anything. And to be clear, this is just my personal opinion. Maybe a breakthrough does happen and allows five years to be compressed into two. Crazier things have happened. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And all of you out there, have a great day.